Everyone wants to live a long and healthy life with a body which looks and performs how they want it to. Yet so many search for the answers by taking the advice from peers and by following the dietary and training plans of people with different goals and outcomes to which they're searching. Within the health and fitness industry, there's a significant amount of disinformation from a wide variety of self-proclaimed experts, never really tying together what you want or need to hear. There are people who are performing at their best and there are others who don't know where to begin. This podcast aims to take you through the compendium of what is diet and fitness to allow you to design your own trading programs to meet your specific needs. In each episode, we're going to discuss a new topic surrounding diet, fitness and mindset, which builds on previous knowledge. This allows you to understand and appreciate the fundamentals before we delve into the more specific needs of top level athletes. This podcast is hosted by James and Max. James is a registered dietitian and nutritionist who's worked within the NHS and private sector. He specialises in improving athletic performance, enhancing training recovery and accelerating muscle growth. And I'm Max, a strength and conditioning coach who specialises in athletic performance and personal development. I've worked with GB athletes in bobsleigh and rowing and also alongside semi-professional and professional rugby players. Together we hope to provide a wealth of knowledge and value to you, the listener. Thanks for tuning in. This is my athletic compendium. That's quite impressive. <laughs> Thanks. I practiced that when I was alone, when I was like 13. <laughs> you know, I thought you were going to say no, this week no for the next po- <laughs> podcast, I wanted to practice doing it. <laughs> right. Hi guys, and welcome back to the podcast. It's James and Max here um, for another episode of my athletic compendium. Today we thought we'd talk about protein, um, obviously we've got you recording on our microphone and we've got the YouTube video set up for those of you that do want to watch it. Um, so yeah, protein, do you want to start? Why is it important? It's good for the gains. It's good for the gains, um, that's the most important thing. <laughs> that's what we're all here for. Absolutely. Athletes, we, we, we need to perform, we need to recover effectively, but most importantly, we need to look good naked, <laughs> and that's why it's important. No, so in in all seriousness, Max, um, yes. why is protein important? So protein, like all of the macronutrients, is important in your diet. Um, it's great for building muscle, muscle recovery, um, injury recovery, and prevention. Mm-hmm. Um, all important for these kind of things. You'll go into more depth in that kind of area of things because that is your topic. But, that is my topic. Um, but yeah, it's very, very important. It's the building blocks for muscle. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, if you want to recover well, if you want to gain muscle, if you want to get lean, if you want to um, become a better athlete, protein, a higher protein in your, uh, high protein in your diet is going to be important. So. Definitely. I think it's one of the most important macronutrients. I say one of the most important. They're all re- they equally all important. Yeah. Um, but I think for athletic performance carbohydrates and protein mm. definitely stand out as, as the most or the more important mm. macronutrients. So like we touched on in the first episode, protein gives you four calories per gram um, that you eat. Uh, everyone has their own individual protein requirements. Um, essentially a good place to start if you're an athlete would be about 1.4 grams per kilo. So just using as an example, 80, 80 kilo person, uh, have you got your phone on you? Do you want to do a quick maths? No. Um, so for someone who's 80 kilos, we times that by 1.4. 80 times 1.4. Would be 112 grams of protein. And that's what you need to eat in a whole day. Obviously you may weigh slightly more, slightly less, uh, but that's a good round figure. Maybe 1.4 to two grams per kilo. Um, depending on what you do, um, I, th- I think for for the sedentary person, you know, someone who's not exercising, doesn't do um, much other than move in terms of going around work. Uh, I think the recommendation is 0.75 grams per kilo. But like Max just touched on, protein is really important for when we're exercising to make sure that we're recovering effectively, to make sure we're building. Um, muscle and we're repairing the muscles that we're damaging Um, and that's why 1.4 is is almost double Mm. you know the 0.75 grams um, per kilo recommendation so work out what your requirements are that's a good place to start Um, and then start to look in you know read on the back of packaging how much 
of a certain type of food, um, you know, how much protein you'd get from that certain amount. So I think, for example, cooked chicken, chicken's very high, especially chicken breast, uh, it's high in protein, but low in a lot of fat and carbohydrates. So I think it gives you about 30 grams per 100 grams that you would eat. So obviously, if you need to eat 112 grams of protein, you can start to equate what you know you need to eat. It's not just chicken, you get protein from a whole host of different foods. I mean, animal foods are primarily where you would get most protein from because it's flesh, it's, it's meat, it's eggs. Um, but you also get lots of protein from things like nuts, pulses, so beans, baked beans, you know, kidney beans. Um, cheese is also another one, although that's, you know, still, it's not meat, it's vegetarian, um, but it's still a byproduct of an animal. Um, essentially, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go off now, I'll go off on a tangent. Go on a tangent. But yeah. essentially, I think I touched on it before in the first episode. Proteins consist of amino acids, and like you said, amino acids are the building blocks of protein, and they're really important for the muscle growth and recovery. Um, and there's two different types of amino acids. Do you know what they are? Do you want to explain what they are? Essential and non-essential. Fantastic. So essential amino acids. I'm just gonna. Put, yeah. No, you go. Away. So you, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I will. Uh, essential amino acids generally you find in they're like a complete protein so yep. uh, sorry they they create a complete protein S- yeah. well they are a complete protein so foods are a complete protein if they contain all the essential That's amino it. acids That's it. yeah so generally you'd find a, 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 an essential amino acid in protein uh, sorry, in, uh, in, in like meats and, mm-hmm. and dairy yeah um, and then your non-essential amino acids would come from generally vegetarian vegan stuff so like yeah, beans, like pulses, plant-based stuff. like blah 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 that kind exactly. of stuff exactly and the essential amino acids they're called essential because you need to obtain them from your diet um your body your liver specifically can transform different amino acids into other amino acids as your body needs them so if it needs more of a certain amino acid it can convert one into the other um and the ones that it can convert are the non-essential amino acids. So it's not necessary to get them from your diet. And that's why the essential ones are needed from your diet. Now, you need all the amino acids. I think there's 20 in total. You need all the amino acids in your diet because your your ability to recover, you know, repair muscle or build new muscle um, depends on, you know, essentially the lowest amino acid that you have you're only as good as your weakest amino acid essentially so you need all of them in certain quantities to allow for that muscle growth and recovery hence they're called essential now um you know you you said uh that the essential amino acids primarily come from animal-based foods um uh, because you know animal-based foods are essentially a complete protein um but the non-essential amino acids come from a whole host of different foods. You know, I think even bread, like wheat, you know, what makes bread contains certain amounts of protein, but it would be the non-essential amino acids. And that's why it's really important you eat a wide variety of your diet because you can get different amino acids from different foods, which all add together in your body to create that complete protein. Um, so that's where foods come from. I mean, amino acids come from. It might be worth mentioning that you know when you you know if you do go on to track your protein intake with MyFitnessPal, for example, mm. you don't have to necessarily track what amino acids you're having. Yeah, exactly. That, that would be a little bit overkill if you Absolutely. ask me. Absolutely. Um, worry about you know your protein intake in general, but you don't have to go making sure that you've got all twenty yeah, odd exactly. amino acids. But also, it, what I'm trying to say is you don't need to get all your amino you don't need to get all your protein intakes mm, yeah. from just animal sources because they're considered complete proteins you can get a lot of your protein from these plant-based or vegetarian mm. alternatives as long as you're eating different foods because you'll collect the amino acids from different foods to make that complete protein so don't just think you need to eat you know two kilos of chicken every day you need you know a wide variety of different mm. foods and it, as well, you know, if you are an athlete and you are vegetarian or vegan or you're planning on becoming vegetarian or vegan, um, there are athletes out there that do 
but mm-hmm. they do have that kind of a diet and, and don't suffer at all. Absolutely. Um, so if, if that is something that you're, you're kind of a route that you're going down or you are you plan to go down, um, you know, and you but you don't want to sacrifice your performance or your recovery or yeah. your muscle gain or whatever, it's nothing to worry about, but it is yeah. important to maybe and just make sure that you are getting that variety of um, exactly. non-essential I, I, I get asked quite a lot as a dietitian, you know, what, what do you think of plant-based diets? What do you think of vegan diets? And the simple answer is if they're done well Mm. they're absolutely fine the majority of people though don't fully understand it Mm. they think potatoes are a vegetable and that they only eat potatoes so they're not going to get any protein from that you need a whole host of different foods you know Mm. we're talking different beans different uh pulses so like lentils to get different amino acids rice and peas go really well together to complete to make a complete protein. You've got chickpeas, you know, hummus is made from chickpeas. All of those contain high levels of protein, but they don't contain all the amino acids. And that's why you need to pair them together with other foods to make sure that you're getting all the amino acids that you need for growth and recovery. Hmm. Um, I think there was one other point that I really wanted to touch on and you know, we, we, we've allowed people to work out how much protein they need per day. Um, but another important f- factor is it's, it's not just making sure you're getting your protein intakes straight after exercise. You know, everyone thinks you need a big protein shake after your workout to make sure you get muscle growth and recovery. And yes, post exercise nutrition is really important, but the most important factor for protein is that you're spacing your protein intakes across the day so if you're in you know if your requirements are 112 grams per day it's really important that you're getting i don't know 30 grams at breakfast 30 grams at lunch 30 grams in the evening and in between those you know you're getting 10 grams here 10 grams there from from other snacks um and and your meals don't need to be primarily protein based you know a quarter of your plate is a good way to start so for example if you're making a dish if you factor in your plate split split into three different sections let's say you split it right down the middle and then one of those halves you split again into in in half so you've got three different sections just a quarter of your plate needs to be protein and if you base your meals around that you'll primarily hit you'll most likely hit your protein intakes mm. um we don't want to make this episode too long it is just a quick recap on protein and you know improving awareness of what you need and where where the foods come from do you have anything else to add on this um in terms of sort of supplementation with protein Mm, um, that's a good point is i think quite an important one very commonly people kind of use protein shakes as an uh, sort of a part of their diet instead of having Mm. a high protein meal and it's not protein shakes aren't a meal replacement Mm. uh they're a supplement to your diet so in in addition to your diet um to help you you know get a little bump up or you know if you are training particularly vigorously or particularly um you know muscle fatiguing you need you need that high protein diet to recover and to build that muscle then it's a good to supplement your diet yeah never to replace a meal exactly that's quite common and i think it's something that definitely needs to be completely nipped in the bud nipped in the bud yeah you you don't need protein shakes you don't need mm. protein supplements they are a tool to help you get to your you know protein requirements but they are not a necessity they're they're, they're essentially there for ease of access mm-hmm. to make your life easy yeah um and that's why they cost so much in comparison to other foods it's because it's a convenience food it's there for you when you need it and it's easier to quickly shake up some powder after your workout than it is to quickly cook up a meal um again you you don't you don't completely need protein shakes mm. um I would I would actually advise you, you you know you stay away from them. You get quick acting sources of protein from from your diet, like milk, for example. If you if you it doesn't even have to be cow's milk. If you are a vegan, you know you can get soya milk um, straight after your workout. That will contain all the amino acids you need. It's quickly digested. Um, it's got two different types of protein in it, so you, you'll get whey protein and you'll get casein if you're having the cow's milk. So you'll get a quick rapid ingestion 
of uh, all the amino acids you need um, and you'll also get a steady release from the casein so it's actually probably better to not just go for whey protein mm. shakes but good mm. point well raised mm. we'll definitely touch on the different supplements later yeah. when we delve into it but you know just for this episode i think let's just stick with the foods yeah definitely mm. awesome thanks guys thanks for listening uh hope you tune in next week and thanks for watching if the camera hasn't died again probably has <laughs> probably has it's my phone it's terrible we'll, we'll get a camera we promise we're just but building onto point. it at some point. <laughs> anyway thanks for listening guys take care nice one Arrivederci.